carry on. And I believe I was rather cheesily doing it in green. So here we go. Green serum. Continued. So yesterday was just sort of discussion of what it was about. Now I'm going to demonstrate with exercise 29, which as you can see has is basically five different exercises. First one. Evaluate the line integral. Now the reason why I've written all positively oriented, well positive orientation of course is important for Green's theorem. I tell you what, before I do any calculations, let me write the formula down. Formula for Green's theorem looks like this. You have a line integral and you can turn it into a double integral or in fact the other way around. Please keep quiet. Today we'll just be looking at turning line integrals into double integrals. Um, when I drew those pictures, <laughs> I drew them in a hurry and putting in arrows was just too hard. So you just have to, you can write them in in pencil. All of the, uh, all of the curves are positively oriented. Because all of the curves are outer boundaries of their regions, that's it's the same as anti-clockwise. Okay, so x to the 4 dx plus xy dy along the c where c is that triangle. There's a 1, there's a 1, there's C. Okay, now if I wanted to do that as a line integral, it wouldn't be a particularly hard line integral, but I'd have to do it in three parts because my curve is actually uh, a union of three line segments and I'd have to do each line segment separately in the line integral. So line segments are easy to parametrize. My integrand is pretty simple, it's just of a polynomial nature, so they wouldn't be hard integrals, but there would be three of them. Whereas, using Green's theorem, I can turn this into a double integral, and I can call this region inside C my region D. This x to the 4 over here, that's my P, and this xy over here, that's my Q. The thing that makes it P is it's, that it's not that it's written first, it's that it's next to the dx. So you could have written this as x, y, d, y plus x to the 4 dx and it would be the same. So it's not that it was written first, it's that it's next to the dx. So the thing that's next to the dx is your p and the thing that's next to the dy is your q. Don't, don't forget signs. If that was a minus x, y, then q would be a minus x, y. Okay, so I want to do dq by dx minus dp by dy dA over d. Green's theorem says I can do that. This thing over here is dq by dx, and that thing over there is dp by dy. So let me get my solutions ready in case I do something silly. Okay, so let's integrate that. I'm going to make y go first, dy, and then dx y is going to go from y equals 0 to that oblique line, which is 1 minus x. For values of x, they go from 0 to 1, and now I integrate that. Nice, easy double integral. Um, what is it? It'll be a half y squared, 0 to 1 minus x. One minus x squared dx, which I can square out, but in fact I can immediately integrate. That'll be 1 minus x to the power 3. Uh, 0 to 1. Let me just check myself. If I differentiate that, I bring the 3 down. Minus 1. That's correct. I've done enough chain rule in my time to be able to kind of do it backwards, but of course if you just multiplied out that 1 minus x squared, you'd achieve the same result. What's that? That minus a sixth, plug in the 1, plug in the 0, 1 over 6. There's my answer, 1 over 6. And that is the same result that I would get if I did the line integral, which of course would actually be three line integrals. Mm -hmm. I hope you can agree that that was not a hard double integral. Green theorem is really nice. Replacing line integrals which are potentially hard with double integrals which are really quite easy, it's, it's really a very, very nice theorem. It decreases your workload, which is always nice. 
You happy with that? Any questions about that particular one? Everybody seems happy? I'll move on to the next one. What's the next one? The next one is this thing. 3y minus e to the sine x. And already I'm thinking, oh my goodness, doing this as a line integral would not be nice. No matter what the curve is. Plus 7x plus, oh my goodness, look at the square root. What is the curve? It's that circle over there. Circle of radius 3, centered on the origin. Okay, I'm going to call the region inside D. Now, if I wanted to do that as a line integral, I would need to parametrize my curve, which would be fine. It would be x cos t. x would be 3 cos t, and y would be 3 sine t. Am I actually recording? I hope so. Yeah, I am. Good. Normally, there's the little toolbar, but it's not there now. Okay. So, sorry. Just checking. Um... If, so right, yes, I lost my track there for a second. I would have to parametrize my curve. X would be 3 cos t, y would be 3 sine t, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And then I'd need to plug that into my, everywhere there's an x, I'd need to put 3 cos t. And everywhere there's a y, I'd need to put 3 sine t. The dx would be replaced by, what, minus 3 sine t. And the dy would be replaced by 3 cos t, uh, with a dt tagging on at the end. Um... It wouldn't be too bad. The first term, the 3y with the dx would turn into a 3 sine squared. It would turn into a, what, a 9, a 27 sine squared. Okay, that We'd be able to deal with that. The next term would be an e to this. Oh, no, that wouldn't be so nice because it would be sine of 3 cos t. Oh, no, not so nice. Then I'd probably have to do some sort of substitution. I'm sure we could deal with it. I'm sure our integration skills are up to the task, but it would be quite tricky. It would take a while, and there'd be lots of steps. You'd have four integrals, of which certainly two would be quite demanding, the exponential and the square root. But Green's theorem says we can replace this with a double integral, where the first term is dq by dx, which is 7, minus dp by dy, which is 3, dA. Okay, that's 4. I can pull that 4 out of the integral. And now I have three options. Op op the, ho the, 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 the weakest option, the most horrible option, is actually carrying out that double integral in rectangular coordinates. In which case I do dy dx, my y would go from minus square root 9 minus x squared to positive square root 9 minus x squared, and x would go from minus 3 to 3. And that's fine. And when we carried out the integral, we'd have to do a trigonometric substitution, and we all know how to do that. The next best option is to, to actually carry out that double integral in polar coordinates, in which case you'd replace a, a dA with r dr d theta. r would go from 0 to 3. Theta would go from 0 to 2 pi. It would be quite an easy integral. But the best option of all is to recognize that this thing here is simply the area of D. And D is a circle, and we've known what the formula for the area of a circle is since grade what? Grade what? When do you learn pi r squared? Grade 9? Really? And then the honest amongst you are going, I'm still not, I'm still a bit hazy on the area of a circle. Pi r squared. So that's 9 times 4, that's 36 pi. Whenever you have integral, integral dA of something, that integral is simply the area of the something. And if the something is like a circle or a rectangle or a triangle, you can just use high school geometry to work it out. If it's something funny shaped, then sure, you'd have to integrate. Cool, nice. And that is probably a tenth as long, maybe a twentieth as long as the line integral would have been, with its many, many bits and steps and substitutions and things. Nice, huh? 
Green's theorem, yay! C. Okay, all right, that integrand's not too bad. That integrand's kind of polynomial-ish, which is fine. What's my curve? My curve is the union of two curves. Where this one over here is y equals x cubed, and this one over here is y equals x squared, and this must be the point one one. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's not really a problem. That wouldn't be too hard to do. But once again, we'd have to do it in two bits because my curve is a union of two curves. The one curve is x cubed, the other curve is x squared. I'd need to parametrize them both and be careful of the directionality of that x squared because the direction is important. And the way you might, by default, parametrize y equals x squared is probably the wrong direction. So you'd have to think about it a bit. Maybe have a 1 minus t squared or something built into your parametrization. I'd have to think about it a bit. But as long as we were aware of directionality and, and were careful, this wouldn't be a hard double integral, but it would be two, not double integral, beg your pardon, line integral. It wouldn't be hard, but it would be in two bits with quite a few terms. But none of those terms would be particularly hard. However, if we replace it with a double integral, it gets even easier. dq by dx minus dp by dy minus dp by dy. So that's actually going to be a plus. Catch up with me, Stylus, please. Um, okay, dp by dy is minus 2y, and I'm subtracting it so it becomes that. Be careful of signs. If you, if you are self-aware enough to know that mix, messing up signs is an error that you do tend to make, then be quite careful and write minus and open brackets and only then put in dp by dy. And if it ha comes along with a minus, you've kind of, you're being safe. Practice safe sign usage. Okay. Sorry, was that, was that in poor taste? I beg your pardon. I apologize, I apologize. Um, so y is going, so I'm going to make y go first, and y is going from the bottom curve to the top curve. Am I correct? Will x cubed be the one at the bottom? It will be. It will be. Between 0 and 1, x cubed will be the one at the bottom. Yeah? Would this be an easy one to do a coordinate change on because we have an x in the base? You mean in the line integral or in the double integral? I think it would be unnecessary. It would make the question harder rather than easier. Yeah. For values of x that go from 0 to 1, so what do we have? We have y squared minus y evaluated from x cubed to x squared. So that'll be x to the 4 minus x squared subtract x to the 6 plus x to the 3 which is one fifth x to the five minus one third x cubed minus one seventh x to the seventh plus one quarter x to the four. Okay, now if you got something like that in a test or an exam, I would expect you without a calculator to be able to add those up. Can you do that? Yes, you can. <laughs> You've been adding fractions since grade three. Yes, yes, you have. Yes, look, I've, I've had children in grade three. I've, I've moved my way up to grade six so far, so I know what the syllabus, school syllabus is. I must admit the school syllabus has gone through some changes. Okay, so then tell me since when you have been adding fractions, because it's not since first year university. Hmm? I'm seeing people's mouth. Grade 10? Question over here, probably something a little bit more sensible. Yeah. Sorry, can you please keep quiet so I can hear?
if you left it where I've left it yeah. now? Yeah. Oh, you probably would. It depends how many marks they were assigned to the question. If it were a fairly stingy mark allocation, then that would be enough. But if it was a more generous mark allocation. No, it's not quick. <laughs> okay, let me demonstrate fraction adding. What we want to find is the lowest common denominator, or, or in fact any denominator, but lowest would be nice. Let's have a look. 21 won't do it. Uh, in fact, I think we're going to have to multiply all of those together. 5 times 3 times 7 times 4. So that would be 3 times 7 times 4 minus 5 times 7 times 4 minus 5 times 3 times 4 plus plus, what's that, 5 times 3 times 7, there we go. And you'd have to work that out. <laughs> is it one of those abandoned ship things? It's like, no, no, this isn't worth it. You <laughs> okay. No, I must admit, in a test or an exam, you do look at that and you think, I think my time is better spent constructing a surface integral in some other question, which is worth like six marks. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I give you that. Okay. Somebody was quick to give his math credentials there with his 420. I did not do that in my head. I copied that from my notes. But, but that is how you would do it. Okay, you know how to add fractions. You know how to add fractions. Okay. Okay, all right. But I think you've got the, the, the hang of it now. I'll do two more examples, but I don't think you need me to. X to the 5 plus 3y dx plus 2x minus e to the y cubed. Sure. That's small. And the... Okay, I didn't actually draw the curve for D. I gave it a formula instead. Because um, I just kind of constrained for space on the page, and that particular picture takes up space. It's a circle of center 1, 5. There's 1, there's 5. And it's got radius 4, sorry, radius 2. Catch up with me, stylus. There we go. So it's something like that. Okay, so that's C. So we'd need to parametrize our curve, which is fine, okay. The X and the Y parametric expressions we each have two terms because it's been set, shifted off the origin. But that's okay. Um, we are going to be putting one of them to the power 5. That's not so nice. Binomial to the power 5. And we're going to have e to the power of y cubed, where y is a binomial. So, yeah, you can see there's potential for quite a lot of messiness here. We'd have to, it would take a while. There'd be lots of terms. We'd have to trade very carefully because there'd be lots of potential for making mistakes. Let's change that into a double integral, dq by dx minus dp by dy once again. We can take the 2 minus 3 out of the integral and we're left with the integral, integral dA, which is just the area of the circle. So it's just minus 1 times by pi r squared. The negative comes from the 2 minus 3. Question. Uh, what are the conditions for the greens there again? Uh, the, yeah, the, 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 the curve has to be a closed mm -hmm. curve so that it is the boundary of a region. A non-closed curve would not be. It needs to be positively oriented. If it's not positively oriented, Green's theorem, you can still use Green's theorem, you just have to smack a minus in front. Because an, a, an integral along C in one direction is the negative integral along C in the other direction. Just like in, in single variable integration, the integral from A to B is the negative integral from B to A. It's the same thing. Um, so the, the negatively oriented you could still um, use. And what else? Your P and your Q, 
have to have continuous partial derivatives within the region and also slightly outside the region and that can be a problem and we're going to run into that with exercises um, 40 and 41 and 42 because in 40, 41 and 42 our P and our Q are defined along the curve but they're not defined at a point within the region which then messes with Green's theorem and so we'll look at special cases to avoid that. Um, a question over there, and then I'll come uh, to you. Yeah. If you were not given a direction of orientation, you assume positive orientation. It's the default. But the thing is, if you're just given a Cartesian equation of a curve, then when you parameterize it, you have power over what direction you give it. So you assume positive orientation as the default question? If you weren't given the actual curve, if you were just given, you can't assume that, no. You have to have a picture or a description to know that it's a closed curve, yeah. Everybody happy? Okay, all right. Um, let's do E. Is Okay, E is an interesting one because E is actually in two parts. We're going to do the same integral along two very similar but slightly different curves. Um, y squared dx plus 3xy dy. And let's first do this curve over here, which is drawn rather scruffily. And every year I think, oh, I really should do a better drawing for the handbook. And then I don't. Okay, there's my C, it's positively oriented. Um, it's the arcs of two circles, joined by the little line segments. Um, yeah, okay. So let's have a look. I could do that line integral, it wouldn't be particularly hard, but it would be in four pieces, because there are four curves making up my C, and I'd have to do a different line integral for each of them two line segments and two pieces of circle. The pieces of circle are not particularly hard because the circle is centered on the origin, but still, there'd be a little bit of work involved. So let's use Green's theorem. dq by dx minus dp by dy. Okay, 3y minus 2y is just y. Uh, let's have a look. I am going to actually use polar coordinates. So actually, let me write here dA. And then in the next line, I'm going to change everything to polar. The y is r sine theta. The dA is r dr d theta. So I'm going to make that r actually into an r squared. r is going from 1 to 2, while theta goes from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, and this is one of those cases where we can actually integrate with respect to r and theta simultaneously <coughs> because of two important features. One, my integrand is a product of two functions where one function is all about r and the other function is all about theta. And my limits of integration are all just numbers. So if those two special cases, two special conditions are there, you can integrate with respect to r and theta simultaneously and save yourself a little bit of time. But as I've said before, if you're not sure, be safe and just do one at a time. Question? Um, is, what is the reason why we would want to change, do the I'm changing from rectangle, I'm changing from a rectangular coordinates into polar coordinates because of the region. The region is more easily described with polar coordinates. If I wanted to do rectangular coordinates, I would have to have divided my, I'd have to divide my region up like that. And why, and I'd have to do three integrals. Uh, one for this bit down here, okay, where y would go from the one circle to the other circle, and x goes from zero to one. Another one that's here, very similar, but the limit's the other way around. And then one for here, where y goes from the one circle to the same circle, but different sign square root. So I'd have to do three double integrals. There'd be square roots all over the place, and high potential for having to do a trigonometric substitution. OK, I'm going to take those scribbles out now. <coughs> there we go. 
<coughs> so the integral, if you just look at your, the algebra, if you just look at that integral, integral y dA, there's, there's no special call for polar coordinates, but the region strongly suggests a change to polar coordinates. Okay, so what do I have here? I have one third r cubed from one to two, and I have minus cos theta from minus pi over two to pi over two. But cos of theta, cos of pi over two is zero, and cos of minus pi over two is also zero, so this is just zero. You can work out the r if you want, but it doesn't matter, you're timesing it by zero. Okay, if I'd used, ugh, I'm doing them in the wrong order, didn't I? I did the second one first, ugh, doesn't matter. This was actually the one, the, this curve that I call, called E2 in, my, in the handbook. If you do that same integral for curve E1, your, the, the, the algebra will look the same right up until this line with the R's and the cos's. The only thing that's going to differ are the limits of integration of theta. Okay. Um, let's have a look. I'm actually going to write this over here. If curve E1, then the same until here, where we'd actually have, we'd still have R going from 1 to 2. We'd still have an R squared sine theta, dr d theta. There's no reason not to. It would all, still all be the same. But my theta would go from 0 to pi. And now when I do the actual algebra, I'll still have one third r cubed from one to two, and I'll still have minus cos theta, but my limits are different, and now I don't have those zeros anymore. So then what's that? That's eight over three minus one over three, and that's seven over three. Cos of pi is minus one, so minus cos of pi is one. Subtract a negative plus one, so that's 14 over three. Now, the line integral, the way it's structured as a PDX plus a QDY, that's, that's work because that's F dot DR. So what this is saying is that if in, this, in exactly the same force field, if you move a particle along that, if you move a particle along the one curve or the very similar other curve, the work done is very different. It's just interesting because the force field's the same. The shape of the curve is the same. Just the sort of positioning within the space is different, and it makes quite a difference to the work done. Okay, but I think I've bored you long enough. How about you give it a go and do number 30 and number 31? And I'll give you the answers so that you can check yourself. <coughs> 